So hi there, yeah, I'm John Riley, I'm a research and development engineer at Enmis. Uh, we've been working with the Strath SDR team with getting a private 5G network into one of our Enmis facilities. So I'll explain what the National Manufacturing Institute in Scotland is first. So it's really an umbrella term for a lot of specialist uh, facilities and centres. So we've got the Advanced Forming Research Centre and the Lightweight Manufacturing Centre which is all about innovative techniques in manufacturing and are really excel at uh, R&D. We've also got the new digital factory, which is go going to be built uh, next year, quarter uh, three, and it's all going to be about industry 4.0 and really the full automation of the manufacturing. Then we've got the collaboration hub. So NMIS is all about getting academia and industry together. So the collaboration hub will be a place where we bring both of these together to create uh, projects and uh, get funding. Then finally, the Manufacturing Skills Academy is a place where we'll provide training for uh, anyone within Scotland, uh, manufacturing skills, uh, no matter what point of their career they're at. So really, what does NMIS do? We bridge the gap, and it's a critical gap between research and academia. And uh, commercialization. So really, we lie in the TRL scale between uh, four and six. As you'll see down below there, these are some of the companies we've worked with uh, throughout the years, and all of them have became NMIS members. So really, what are the benefits of 5G for manufacturing? So in manufacturing, there's high de device den density. So whether that is a lot of uh, machinery equipment or handheld devices, uh, 5G will be able to provide this connectivity, we believe, over other wireless and wired technologies. High security, as a lot of our members at NMIS want, we want their data to be secure. So we believe uh, 5G is how we're going to keep data secure because any device that joins the 5G network will either be connected through a SIM or an eSIM card. High bandwidth, so uh, no matter uh, the machines or the processes themselves, uh, a lot of data is generated and 5G provides us uh, the throughput, whether it is sending data or whether it's us uh, receiving data. And then closed loop control uh, as an area of interest uh, for manufacturing because it could help improve yield and reduce uh, time wasted on out of spec components as we'd be able to see when things go wrong. And then finally, uh, networking slicing, it would be able to segment uh, or workshop into different groups of high and low data requirements. So for example, low data requirement would be temperature sensors or small sensors, which we add on to uh, the machines themselves. And high demand would be seen there. It's like live video feeds or all the data points from PL. And again, that's really the most uh, effective use of uh, the 5G network. So really what's in this uh, going to our private 5G network. So these are some of the use cases in which uh, we want to use the 5G network. Part of the Digital Factory's uh, flagship testbed called Resume, and Resume is really automating uh, the manufacturing uh, environment, and it uses the full ISO 95 stack. And ISO 95 stack covers the controls and interfaces to have the full connection from the box all the way up to the manufacturing system. And then another use case, which is of real interest in configurable factories with uh, key, uh, machines uh, will no longer be tethered to network points. They'll be able to move much more rapidly, which will allow uh, customers and manufacturers to meet market demands as they change. Another area that is an autonomous lab that NMS is creating. And that is a, a lab which will test materials with autonomous robots. With 5G, this will allow us to use uh, robots which can move through a uh, physical space rather than just using a uh, standalone in place robots. And then VR and AR simulation and training. As uh, manufacturing becomes more complicated, uh, training, training is required. So as you'll see here in the video, we've got a digital twin. So using VR and the 5G, we could create a digital twin of a manufacturing process to allow people to train on it. And we could stream live data to show them exactly what's happening uh, when the machine's moving itself. And then finally, the AR 
A headset could be really useful on the workshop floor as it would allow a, all information to be provided to technicians as they need it, whether it be from them just fixing a machine or whether it's them creating a part, uh, the data could be streamed over the 5G network. In both of these situations, BR and AR, uh, they use a lot of data and require low latency. And this, again, is another reason why we believe uh, 5G is the technology that's required for manufacturing. Again, uh, John Riley, if you get any further questions or comments, feel free to drop me an email at john.riley at strath.ac.uk. Cheers, thanks very much.